Welcome to Heart Mindify. Before we start the show, just a reminder to share, rate, and subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening to it. And please give us a five star rating. It helps us beat the big tech algorithms. I'm John Izzy. Change can be difficult for a lot of us, but when we understand what makes us tick, we develop a better understanding of who we are and begin a journey of discovering our best self. Join me for a free session at johnizzy.com. And I'm Kim Cordy, creator of the Emotion Chef Framework, an emotion management tool. Thoughts drive emotions and emotions drive thoughts, but it's our emotions that drive our decisions and behaviors. Find out more at kimcordy.com. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Knowing each other personally and socially for the past 10 years, Kim and John have joined forces, bringing years of experience and training providing a platform for growth and personal development, along with a little humor. John is the heart, Kim is the mind, and together they are Heart Mindified. Hey, Kim, how are you? Are you as tired as I am this week? <laughs> I I am so tired. I, I think I told you I'm redoing my... Emotion Chef program and kind of expanding it. It's just being organized a little bit. And it's using a different way to do the presentation. It's a little, it's a more interactive. It's called Prezi. It's really cool. Prezi is new to me. And I went to record and I had all kinds of problems. And it took me a week because it wouldn't save. Like I, I could save sometimes and not others. We couldn't figure it out. I was on with them, finally figured it out, then recorded again. But my eyes weren't focused correctly, so it looked like I was just slightly off. And my oh, that's husband, horrible. I know. And, <laughs> and so Andrew and I were looking at it. I'm like, it didn't look that bad when I looked at the recording quickly when I was done. But now I go, it looks really bad. And he's like, yeah, that'll <laughs> irritate you after a while. So then I just re-recorded it again this week, and I had a presentation last night, and you know the events of the week. Yeah. And the past couple of weeks, it's like, it hit me this morning. I'm tired. Yeah, it was funny because I got home from, we had court this week with Bikers Against Child Abuse. And for listeners, explain what that means, BACA and court. Basically what BACA is, it's an organization made up of bikers and we're throughout the whole world. And we work with the local agencies that are in place to work with these children that have been, you know, sexually abused or physically abused. So one of the things that we do is we take them to court. We go to court with them. And it's a pretty exhausting time for them because, of course, you know, they're telling their story for the first time in a public forum. And it's difficult sometimes for us to hear, you know, what the child had gone through. So when you go through three days of court, you know, by the fourth day, you know, you're exhausted because you're yeah. processing, you know, everything that they're processing. And, you know, you're trying to be a support for them and empowering them to not be afraid. And so it takes, you know, it takes time to just kind of relax and veg out and kind of regroup. And, you know, slowly I feel now that my, my day is starting to come back to me. I got home last night. I think I got home from court around three o'clock and I just kind of laid down and woke up around 7 p.m. and kind of just did really nothing, put something on the TV that was mindless to just let my mind just wander and do its thing. And, you know, I meditated a little bit and kind of just started to get back into the day to day and realized this morning when I woke up, I was just as tired as I was when I went to sleep. So my body just hasn't responded yet to, <laughs> to the exhaustion in a way where, you know, I'm bouncing back, but it will. And it'll be fine. But right now I just feel, and like you said, with the past events of the week and last week and, you know, everything else going on, it's just, um, it takes a toll on your system. It does. It really does. You would think that because neither one of us did anything that was terribly physically active. It wasn't like no. we were 
building a house or working on the yard or anything like that. And yet we both are exhausted. It's because our brain uses up a lot of energy for heavy mental and emotional tasks. And actually emotions are a mental task. It it, it does consume a lot of the brain energy. This is why I talk so much about, and it's a big part of being an emotion chef, is managing your energy, your body's budget. Because we need so much to get through the day. Like your whole body needs energy or calories just to get through the the, the day, to do all of the, the the regular things, just like we keep our lights on in our house and have to pay for food and for rent and all those other things. Our body has its regular operating uh, expenses, but then we've got the extra, the the stress and actually stress like you and I and the country and the world has been enduring because of COVID takes a toll and it requires us to do things like you're doing. Sometimes we don't have a choice. We just fall asleep, but other things we can do like meditation that help Uh, get the body out of what I call emergency budget mode. There's a regular operating budget, which is just your rest and relaxation. And then there's that stress that we can encounter, you know, physically or mentally. And that's more of an emergency budget mode. So it's interesting to me when you were talking, because the first thing I was thinking of was a buddy of mine that lives nearby. um, When he's exhausted or when he has... Um, just gotten totally into his head and he can't get out of it. He sits and plays video games on TV. And um, I think right now he's playing an old game. I think he mentioned it was Far Cry or something. So for the big gamers in the world, um, he's gone back to the (laughs) nineties. So I said to him, I said, how does that work out for you? And he said, you know, it, it takes my mind off of things, but I'm still, I'm still as tired as when I started. And I said, have you tried anything that relaxes the mind? Have you tried anything that just stops the overthinking, right? Because we can get involved in so much activity, whether it's physical activity, like we said earlier, or it's mental activity. And, you know, with physical activity, it's easy, right? You just stop. You stop, you drink a lot of water, you take deep breaths, and you can physically feel your body return to normal. But when it's that mental activity, if you do things that are relaxing, that tap into mental activity, right? When you're doing it, then you're really not relaxing and you're still just as tired. It might be a different type of activity, but it's still causing the brain to overwork. It's still causing the brain not to relax. So I was telling him, I said, you know, it's really important to just kind of sit or take a walk or do something where your mind just wanders and allow your mind to do that, right? Allow your mind to just be where it's at without stimulating it even more with some other type of activity. And for a lot of people, that's difficult to do, especially in the world that we live in. Very true. The benefit of that is that your brain you when you have to tax the brain on a game like you said you're still still requiring energy but when you meditate do yoga sit outside and just gaze at something beautiful or even just in your mind close your eyes and take a trip in your head to someplace beautiful. Your brain is sitting in a black box. It doesn't know you're not in Hawaii or look at the pictures (laughs) of a vacation where you were totally relaxed. Last, a week ago today, Andrew and I took a trip out to the ocean. And ate clam chowder. (laughs) Yes. So because of COVID, we had to sit and eat in our car, but we went right where we get our clam chowder, you can drive up and there's a, a park with this parking area in the park, the lot. You can sit on the edge of, on, uh, on a cliff and stare wow. out at the ocean. So we opened up the sunroof 
and just after we ate our clam chowder, by the way, which is amazing. When you come out, <laughs> y'all, I'm taking you there. It's people come from all over to eat this clam chowder, mostly because it's all cream, butter, and garlic. It's oh, uh, who so doesn't good. like that? <laughs> I, well, you being Italian, love it. Yeah. But the point is, is that we just sat there and listened to the ocean, and I could feel all the tension of the problems I had with getting my recordings done just slip away. And I was doing nothing but just focus on that sound. And now if I ever want to get that feeling back, I just look at the video that I took and I go back in my head to I shared the video I shared with you of right. the scene. Yeah. And I'm there. And yeah. so my brain isn't there, but it doesn't know it's not there. And I can create that feeling without actually being there. So that's, that's another trick. And the, the thing about doing these, these exercises or non exercises is that we get out of the emergency budget mode, that fight or flight, because it doesn't take something huge and scary to get us and our body into that mode. Lots of cortisol and adrenaline going. It just takes a thought. It just takes, you know, some, some stress from work. That's all it takes. And that's why if we can get out of it, we're better off. It's better for our brain. It keep, keeps our nervous system healthy because we naturally go in and out of it all the time. But if we're in that stress state consistently or for long term, we can get stuck. Yeah, we absolutely can. You're a hundred percent correct on that. You know, one of the things that I used to tell people, and they used to think I was absolutely crazy, but I live in West Virginia, right? So it's about 60, 62 miles from Washington, DC. And I used to work in Washington, DC. And I used to take the train um, from West Virginia to DC, or sometimes I would drive and people would say to me, I cannot believe that you drive into the office. And I'm like, well, the morning is pretty brutal, right? Cause it's about a two and a half hour ride with Washington DC rush hour traffic. So yeah, it can be, you know, quite taxing on the body and it can be quite taxing on your emotions if you tend to be or tend to have a little road rage now and then um i don't have road rage at all but i'm just saying right <laughs> but the ride but the ride home was absolutely relaxing i would leave in fact i talked to you a couple of times when i would work in dc and i would be driving home and i'd say wait well, I'm, I'm i'm coming over the crest of the mountain and i'm in Alusia. And then as soon as I hit that crest, it was wide open, beautiful, relaxing, and I really, really enjoyed that ride home. And sometimes today, if I'm feeling really stressed or my mind's just going in, you know, a hundred different directions, I'll get in the car and I'll ride down to Maryland and then just ride along the mountainside and just enjoy a nice relaxing ride. It's, it's, it's something that I can do pretty much automatically, right? I don't have to really pay attention because I'm not in rush hour traffic and, you know, I can just kind of reduce the focus a little bit and just enjoy what's around me. And that I find to be extremely beneficial. But one of the things I wanted to say also was it doesn't have to be something that requires a lot of effort or a lot of time out of your day. It's that, you know, it's, it, it's five minutes, it's 10 minutes, to just kind of take a couple deep breaths, not think about things and just enjoy the moment that you're in or the moment that you're giving yourself. And that can be extremely beneficial. And cause a lot of people say, Oh, I don't even have near the time to meditate. And I'm like, you just play two and a half hours of video games. Yes, you do. You have five minutes, right? It's all, it goes back to what we always say. It's about our choices, right? It's about the choices that we make and what we find is important for us. And mental health is important. Our physical health is important because all of that gives us food to tackle the difficult things that 
a lot of us tackle day to day. So, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's important to find those little moments to just kind of chill out and relax. And if it means go to bed a half an hour early at night and just kind of sit with your thoughts for a little bit, then do that, you know? Or if it's good weather, sit outside, look at the stars. Yeah. It's anything like that. As a chief emotions officer, I tell people the importance of managing our body budget is critical to managing our emotions. If we, our brain, its job is to predict. It's predicting that your body needs to be warmer or colder. It's predicting you know, what's going to happen in the future. That's what the brain does. It's a, it, You don't have to think about what the brain's predicting because it just does it for you. If we are in a stressed situation where it's not only having to predict our regular budget needs, meaning mm-hmm. our levels of water that are in our body are we do we need to drink water you know do we need to eat you know, all of those things the temperature right. but when we're in this high stress mode whether it's self induced meaning we don't need to be there but our thoughts have put us there it now takes up extra energy cuz the blood flow is going elsewhere to the body your brain is not using its your even your immune system is compromised because in a fight or flight situation, it's not worried about you getting sick. It's a worried, your brain is worried about keeping you safe. And so your ability to launch your emotions are impacted to predict and make more coherent emotional responses to things because you have a impaired brain because of all of the cortisol and adrenaline going on. That's why your your ability to get in and out and not go into emergency budget mode is so critical because otherwise you start making, I'll just say it, stupid decisions and respond inappropriately and the other things, the hangries of the, of the day because, <laughs> because you don't, you don't, don't have a body that's operating efficiently. It's using its energy unnecessarily. Yeah. And you know, there's one, there's one point I want to talk about there is you don't even have to be in a stressed situation. If you're the type of person that is constantly going, right, that you're up at 5 a.m. and, you know, you're getting the kids out to school if you have kids or, you know, you're getting up to do your morning routine and then out the door you go and you come home and you're having a great day. You know, there's a lot of days where I have been so busy that I was tired, but I felt good. I was still stressed, right? I was still at a point where my body was still producing the same stressors that it does when I know that I'm stressed, right? Because I'm not giving myself a chance to step back. So even if you feel like everything is going great and I feel awesome, still take that moment because your body still needs that break. So for people that love to keep a task list, um, write that in your, write that in your list. Say, you know, I'm going to give myself five minutes today, or I'm going to give myself five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon, a couple of minutes before I go to bed. Um, Because even though I'm a pretty positive person, I don't want to overdo it. I want to remain positive, right? I want to be able to recognize when there's good positivity in my life and to be able to acknowledge when there's actual negativity in my life so that I can balance the two out, right? Because if we keep going, we're not even in ourselves a chance to to rejuvenate. Your brain only has so much capability. If you're working on something and you just can't move past it, you're you're just struggling like, oh, I need to get this project done. When you step away, walk outside, take that break, and your brain will trigger you to do it. You're going to be triggered because it's it, it needs a break. And when you take that break, that's when it goes back into that calm state, the 
getting out of emergency into calm. So there's nothing wrong, like I said, with being an emergency. It's just you need to manage it. It's just understanding how your engine works so that you can run it the most efficiently. And the more efficient we are at managing our our brain and its energy requirements and our body and its energy requirements, the better we are at managing life. That's just the way that it works because you you see the results of people who just stress, 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 stress. I got to do this. I got to make it here. I got to be successful. And then all of a sudden, like they're sick. Mm -hmm. Dis-ease is disease. Get that? Dis-ease is disease. Dis-ease is disease. I like that. Good stuff. Well, you know, I mean, that's the thing. I, you know, I agree with you. I mean, you know, I, I know that I'm a pretty, you know, pretty positive person. I really take the time to really gain perspective on things without jumping to, you know, the day-to-day talking bit, you know, talking points of, of life. And, but yet, you know, there's times where I get tired. There's times where, even though I'm a very positive person and probably 90% of the time I'm smiling, there's still times where I know that I need to just kind of chill. And it's funny living with my sister. She knows that too. Like she'll, she'll sense when I am happy and I'm in a good mood, but yet I need time. And she knows too, you know, what? I'm going to let him go for a little bit you know, um, which is kind of funny. So it's great to have a partner or a sibling or a roommate that recognizes you because they care about you. Right. And they know that, you know, you need to wind down, you know, you need to relax, you need to rejuvenate. And, um, the thing you, the thing that came to mind when you were talking was, you know, looking at an athlete who is constantly training and pushing their bodies to the limit, if they sustain a plateau for so long, it starts to hinder their performance, right? They have to change things up. They have to take a break. They have to allow their body to rejuvenate. And we have to do the same thing. That doesn't mean it takes hours during the day to do that, or you need a mini vacation. It just means that you know, if you take the time throughout the day to acknowledge the fact that, wow, I've been on the go since eight o'clock this morning. Let me step up. Let me stand up, take a stretch. Um, think about something funny or like you said, close your eyes and think about being at the beach and, you know, set your timer for 10 minutes and come back out and get on with your day. You know, we all live crazy lives. A lot of us do anyway. And Crazy is good. Crazy is fun. It's exciting. But, you know, it can be exhausting too. So take a break. Yeah. Take a break from the mental gymnasium. (laughs) That's true. Uh, Just one point, because I just want to make sure that my point's being made clear. It's like, you don't want to have unnecessary negative thoughts because it can put you into a negative place. But negative thoughts serve as a warning you know, pain is telling you something's going on in your body that needs your attention. And negative thoughts can be the same. It's just the way that we are as humans, we're so fixated on the negative that we sometimes give it more weight or think they're true when they're not. So part of the human experience is to try and weed out the the thoughts that aren't true, but listen to the ones that are. And while it's good to strive to be positive, you you still want to listen on it to what you're saying. That's negative just for the, for the um, exercise of, of questioning it and uh, casting aside anything that's really not true. Yeah. And giving yourself the ability to grow, right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. to, To recognize behaviors, to recognize thoughts, to recognize feelings, and then grow from that. Exactly. You know, because if we just let it happen to us, then, and we don't have an active role in it, then we're doing ourselves a disadvantage. That is a perfect way to say it. If we look at it as it's always something else or someone else, and we've talked about this before, mm-hmm. taking on responsibility 
um, and, and not being afraid of how we feel. When you have an injury, like you last week, we didn't record because you were having such tremendous agony. And I <laughs> use the word agony. Yes, you I hear was, that sound. Was. He was in, he I couldn't even record. His mind was just unable to come up with conversation because he was in tremendous pain. That was that was information coming yeah. to you. The same with our emotions. And it's just figuring out what is that about and then taking action. You took action. We all take action for our pain. We put a Band-Aid or we, we rested or put ice or heat or whatever right. that is. And so we need to feel the same way about our emotions. We need to recognize them and then take action. And part of that is questioning where it's coming from. Yeah. No, I, the, I, I agree. And, you know, with the events of the past couple of weeks, we really haven't had a chance to you and I to sit down and really talk through some of the day's topics or the day's, you know, emotions or what we're seeing um, and what our clients are referring to us. So, Today, we decided that we were just going to sit down and just talk, right? Because I was tired and you're tired. And to kind of just, you know, reinforce each other to, you know, take the time to just kind of sit with your thoughts for a moment and just let them be, right? You don't have to answer. Not every question requires an answer. Yeah. You, know, you just look at them. Just look at it. Yeah, exactly. So, well, Kim, thanks. Thank you, John. And how is your shoulder? So my shoulder or arm, I don't know which yet. We'll find out. Um, is doing a little bit better. They had me on the prednisone for four days, which I probably will never take again. Just because I went off it on Monday was my last dose. Today is Friday. And my body's actually feeling normal again. But... I'm not sure if it was all the prednisone because they changed my blood pressure medicine too. So it could have been, you know, mixed in with that trying to regulate itself. But um, it made me feel really anxious all the time. It was like I was telling people, it was like I was on a first date for 24 hours, right? You know, that feeling, that wheeziness in your stomach, the butterflies. Um, Twitter patient. It, Twitter patient, right? Exactly. <laughs> but it was like I was like that for 24 seven. It was insane. So, I stopped that on Monday. The pain is there. I can feel it, but it's not like it was last week when we were getting ready to record where it was just continually throbbing. Um, but I've forced myself to not stay in the same position all the time. So, you know, I spent a lot of time with my elbows down, you know, my forearms level to on some surface. So I've been forcing myself to to move them, right? to get them out of that same position so that the, so that the muscles, you know, don't get lazy and learn that this is the new position. Right. So I want them to, to keep them, keep them awake for a little bit. So I'm feeling better. I have an appointment on the 2nd of February, so we'll see what they say. We're not sure if it's the elbow or the shoulder or um, what yet, but we'll find out. Well, I'm just glad you're better. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Thanks for asking. All right. Well, listen, Kim, you have a great day. You too, John. All right. Thanks, rest. everybody, for listening. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye bye. New shows are available every Saturday right here on heartmindify.podbean.com or wherever you listen. Kim and I would like to thank each and every one of you for allowing us to be a small part of your life. Be kind to yourself and remember, our hearts tell the story, but our mind is the conductor.